Hello, and welcome back to Nordu's Forgotten Flicks. Whatever happened to Frankie Muniz? I mean, when Malcolm in the Middle was still on the air, he was one of the biggest teen stars in the world, getting guest roles on TV shows, starring in his own movies, and he even started a singing career. But after Malcolm ended, he just sort of disappeared, only being able to get small roles, star in movies no one saw, or guest star in shows that didn't last very long. Which is a shame, because without him, we wouldn't have gotten the 2002 teen revenge comedy, Big Fat Liar. Directed by Sean Levy, Big Fat Liar tells the story of high schooler Jason Shepard, played by Frankie Muniz. He's your typical high school slacker, never doing his homework and then coming up with elaborate excuses. One day, he pushes his luck too far and is told he will be sent to summer school if he doesn't write a thousand word story. He does manage to get it done, a story about a man who grows every time he lies. As he rushes to get it to his teacher, he runs into a limo owned by a movie producer named Marty Wolf, played by Paul Giamatti, who gives him a lift and then steals his story in order to get back on top of the movie making world. He's in the middle of making a movie starring Jaleel White as a cop whose partner is a chicken. A short story written by a high schooler can only be a step up. His teacher and parents don't believe Jason and force him to go to summer school. After his parents leave for their anniversary, he enlists the help of his friend Kaylee, played by Amanda Bynes, to go with him to Hollywood and get Wolf to admit he stole the script. Wolf refuses and the rest of the movie is the pair basically torturing Marty into confessing. Now some of you may be thinking, well that's kind of a dick move. I mean, Jason was a compulsive liar and Marty was only trying to make a good movie again, so why should we root for him? There is a very simple answer to that. Marty is a complete asshole. He yells at his employees, insults them, doesn't let them take the day off, fires them for stupid reasons, and is even a bigger liar than Jason. At least Jason has some kind of morality. And I like to think of this as a kind of cautionary tale. If Jason keeps up the lying, then he will grow up into a man like Marty. Man, this movie's deep. Want another hint of how deep this movie is? Jason's last name is Shepard, and Marty's last name is Wolf. Get it? The little shepherd boy who cried wolf too many times, and then when a real wolf showed up, no one believed him? Yeah. Don't worry, most of the humor is better than that. Mostly thanks to one person. Giamatti and Munez do a good job, and most of the supporting cast are very good as well. But the person who steals the show is Amanda Bynes' as Kaylee. And no, I'm not going to make any Amanda Bynes drug jokes because I'm not an asshole. But she completely owns this movie, having some of the funniest lines. In order to get what we need, we are talking complete physical and psycho-emotional breakdown, people. I want to see a broken man. Like, ooh, I just threw a baseball through your window broken. Snap him like a twig. Squeeze him like a bug. I want you to turn him into mincemeat. And I don't even know what mincemeat is. I want him to scream for his mommy. Wah, wah, mommy, mommy, mommy. Do you hear me, people? Do you read me? Because I don't think you read me. I think they read you. Fair enough. The movie was written by Dan Schneider, who created some of Nickelodeon's most popular live-action shows like Drake and Josh, Joey 101, and iCarly. And it does kind of have that same kind of humor. So if you like any of those shows, you should at least get a few laughs from the movie. And what I really like in the film is the look at Hollywood behind the scenes. Most of the movie is set in Universal Studios' backlot, so you get to see little props from the Universal movies like Jim Carrey's Grinch suit from the live-action Grinch movie, the DeLorean from Back to the Future. You did watch it after my review, right? And even a sign for Isla Nublar from Jurassic Park. I just love seeing all the stuff that goes on behind the scenes. Yeah, it's obviously Hollywood eyes, but I don't mind. And it parodies some movies like Psycho and the Matrix, which may come off as gimmicky, but I got a laugh out of them. And finally, the music's awesome. The party's just begun. Everybody's having fun. Why don't we run away and play some one on one? Let's find a place, just you and me, with no one around. Where we can be who we want to be. For negatives, the movie is pretty predictable. While the ending itself can throw you for a loop, for the most part you know where it's going. And the film can have those really forced moments where it wants you to feel sad, but it comes off as really just awkward. 
Sean Levy is what I like to call Hollywood's most average director. He went on to direct movies like Night at the Museum, Date Night, and Real Steel. I notice this happens a lot. I wouldn't call him bad, just okay. He does a serviceable job, but his moments come off as awkward and misplaced. Now my favorite scene has to be the one where Jason and Kay leave sabotage Marty's car. It has just the right amount of torture for Marty, and also has one of the most maddeningly catchy songs in existence. Hey, Marty, I like your new coloring. It works for you. You did this? Yep, and it can end any time. All I have to do is make one phone call to my dad. Shouldn't be much of a problem since that headset is super glued to your ear. Here's my dad's number. So while Big Fat Liar may not be anything worth raving about, it is a fun little flick. It got very mixed reviews, but pretty much everyone agrees it's harmless. At worst, you probably will just forget about it. I am looking at it through nostalgia, so I'll say this. If you remember watching it when you were younger, check it out again, it holds up pretty well. If you didn't, or were older than 14 in 2002, I say rent it and see if you can get into it. Like I said, at worst, it would just be forgettable. But I think it has a few laughs in there for everyone, and it has a good moral. So, I got mine for like $5 at Kmart, so you don't have much to lose. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye, and remember, the truth is not overrated.